Well, it's really our first step in uh, in the draft process here. Well, I shouldn't say the first step, but you know the the guys have scouted and kind of gathered the information uh, all year, and this is our first kind of big meeting where we uh, start to put the list in place. Um, you know, we, we want to get through that process, and then you know once we build the list out, we're you know we try to get into uh, you know getting the right strategy in place in terms of how we want to. You know, I always say you want to build your list, and then eventually you put the strategy in place where you're going to apply your picks to the list to really accomplish what you want. So it's really the beginning of that process, and um, it's been a good couple of days so far. Yeah, what's your overall impression of this draft? Just, you know, is it more top-heavy? Are there some good quality you know, players at the bottom of the draft? What, what do you, what's your overall impression? I, I think it's probably average, maybe not quite as as good or as deep as last year. But you know, it, you know, drafts are always deemed as, as good or bad or deep or, or what have you. And you can go back years later, and there's always players in every draft. So, you know, I think that you always kind of evaluate it, you know, as a whole, and you're always talking about those sorts of things. But every year, there's there's good players to be had in every round, and and that's really the goal of the group to kind of go through that and and like I always say, use the whole draft. You know, we have um, good opportunity with with a lot of picks early in the draft, but you never know what can happen with different trade scenarios. You may end up having picks later in the draft that we uh, need to be ready for. So. Uh, it's a long process, um, you know, but our guys are really thorough, and and I think we always do a good job. So, With four in the, in the top sixty, I guess, and, and six in the top three rounds, you feel maybe like last year that you have a chance if you keep all those picks and kind of make a real impact on future years again. Yeah, that's the goal for for sure. You know, at, at the end of last year when we kind of made that decision to to trade some people and that kind of thing, we we knew we were really kind of entering into a into a. Uh, you know, period here where we're going to have a lot of picks over you know two three years of drafts, and we have those two first next year as well. Um, you know, I, I think it's coincided well where the team's still competitive. We made the playoffs, um, and that's you've heard Barry talk about it a lot. But that's that's really you know where you want to be. You want to um, you know you want to be building for the future, but you want to have that culture in place um, with a competitive team so that when these young players and these these prospects come onto our team, they're learning the right way. You know, they're learning from Ryan O'Reilly and Roman Yossi and, and, and Forsberg and Saros and these guys. They're learning from, from competitive guys that know how to win. And, you know, they come in and they don't just, they don't just get the league handed to them. You know, they, they learn the right way. They go through the right process and, and eventually they become the leader. So it's, it's really a, it's all, all one process together. So. Jeff, you kind of just hit on a lot of those traits. What are you guys hoping to identify in these prospects in this draft? Well, you're you're always looking for the for the the skill and the talent. Obviously, hockey sense is a big thing that we talk about. So you're you're looking for those you know those tangible aspects that you can see. But you're also doing a ton of work to gather information, find out about the character, the player, the competitiveness. Because you know, as I always say, you're you're drafting the player as to what they are now, but you're trying to project what they'll be in the future. So you have to try to identify those things that can allow the player to develop, allow the player that, you know, when they're 18, we always say, what are they going to be when they're 24, 25 years old? So in order to try to determine that, you got to, you know, really try to find those those things underneath that are in place that are going to allow the player to, to develop going forward. So. Are there specific positions that you are targeting, or is this still the philosophy of we want the best player available in this spot? Yeah, I mean, we always talk about that. Like, you know, we always talk about center ice, and, and you know, we've, we've got a lot of skilled wingers coming up. So we, we do talk about that in terms of if there's a centerman to be had, if there's defensemen to be had, um, you know, particularly maybe some size on the back end. Um, so we do talk about that. Um, but you, you always got to get, get players. You know, you go back um, and you look at the draft, and, you know, they don't all turn out. So you want to make sure you get players, find the best players. But we certainly do. We just had some good conversations just a little while ago about different types. You know, do we need this type of guy, that type of guy, a bigger guy? Uh, so those are all part of it. But in the end, we gotta, you know, you gotta get players, and that does become part of the conversation for sure. We talked last week. We spoke a little bit about you know, maybe using some of the picks as, as assets and so mm -hmm. forth. Does part of you wince a, a little bit when you hear something like that? You say, no, let's hold on to all these draft picks and, <laughs> and, and make all the picks. No, I, I think everybody understands where we are organizationally. Um, you know, all of our guys are on board with with trying to do what's, what's best for the organization. Uh, we've got our amateur meetings this week. Uh, our pro scouts are coming in tonight, and we'll be part of the meetings tomorrow and, and Friday. And so that's a whole other side of it that we're evaluating, and we're always looking to to improve our team. I think our goals are we're competitive now. 
but we're building towards the future as well. So, uh, you know, we're evaluating everything as to what we would do. We understand that the picks are, are currency and assets to, do, to not just pick players, but to do lots of different things. You know, maybe it turns into, um, you know, a younger prospect from another team that, that we can get uh, that's part of our future going forward. Maybe it turns into a, a, you know, a younger pro that's 23, 24 years old that helps us now, but helps us in the future. So. Um, th those are things that, that we're going through organizationally all together. That this right now is about the, our list and the draft and all that, but there's, there's all different pieces that come into play as we, as we go along here. When Barry says he wants you to take some swings on some players, does that change anything for you guys from a, like, a player evaluation Um, Not really. Like, you know, you're always looking for upside. You know, that's, that's the goal. You know, you, um, you, know, you want to get um, – you want to get the best players you can, but with where we pick in the draft, and it's a good thing that you know we're competitive. We're not picking in the top five, top ten every year. Um, you know, you're picking, you know, mid first round, later first round. Um, you know, you, you got to evaluate who's who's got the most upside. Who could be the you know that star someday? So that's kind of you know I think when it's the same thing you're saying swing or upside or whatever it is. Uh, you know, that's really the goal to get the you know again to find that player in the second round or whatever becomes a star one day um it's a difficult thing to do but it, but it's out there so what's, what's been different uh, if anything about you know scouting for Barry as opposed to David are there different ways that, that Barry likes to get information or, or anything that might change yeah a few, a few different things that you know he's implemented you know just from a uh, you know from an information standpoint different things that he you know wanted reported on and inputted and those sorts of things um, but I think that, you know, we, I think, you know, he knows that we have a good, a really good group in place, a lot of pe you know, people that have been together for a while, a good chemistry to the way we work. Um, so, you know, there's, there's been some changes, but I think that there's a lot of good things in place too. So it's worked out well. Jeff, how do you guys go about projecting, you know, organizational need when a lot of these picks are going to pan out at different times? Yeah, I mean that, that is something you talk about because you you do talk about well you, you look at your current team and say we could use this or that but you're also saying well these guys aren't going to be ready for four or five years so you're it's a combination of everything it's it's saying what you need but it's also saying you know as to what you're going to look like down the road so when we talk about projections or what this guy could be or what have you a lot of times you'll match them up to um, you know who they could play with or what your team would look like going forward so. You know, Ten, Tanner Molendijk, for example, is a, a really good, um, really good defensive prospect for us. He's a six-foot left-handed guy. Sometimes you, you can look at a, a bigger right-handed guy and say, okay, well, those two guys could play together and be a really good pair for us five, six, seven years down the road. I mean, those are the, those are the with the amateur draft, that's how long you're talking about down the road, how long it takes. Um, so when we talk about needs, I think a lot of times we'll talk about how they pair with our younger prospects that we have going forward. So, you know, Tanner Mullen, like Glenn Sanders is going to be retiring after 20 plus years with the organization. How, how big of a loss is that for you guys? Uh, it's massive. <laughs> uh, no, Glenny, Glenny's been a huge part of, of our staff. He, he's a, uh, a great person, first off. Uh, he's done a great job for us. We've, we've taken a lot of players from Western Canada. Um, you know, he's, uh, we're going to miss him. But as I've told him multiple times, he'll, he'll always be part of our group going forward. It's, it's just as kind of it's a brotherhood, one of us type of things. But going to be missed for sure, but a big part of it. So, Thank you, Jeff. We'll uh, turn it over to Thanks, guys. Amateur scout Tom Nolan. Guys, how you doing? Good. Um, wonder, wonder if you guys do things like, like tiers, or do you see tiers at all in the, in the draft in terms of the, the talent level? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, this year I think it's probably the first two rounds are a little bit heavy, you know, and then it obviously like in a lot of drafts they just kind of it kind of moves down. There's there's some you know deficiencies in some of the players, but I think the top top two rounds this year are, are pretty good. You're gonna get some good players, you know. So um, it's just like these guys we're all putting the list together, and then we'll always go back at it and kind of work it and adjust it. So, but for some of these. Some of these kids that are that are going to get drafted, does the age difference at their draft year matter a whole lot? Like a guy like Cole Eisenman, one of the youngest players in this draft, yeah. like he's eight nine months young, younger than a lot of the other guys. How how much do you consider that in, in drafting a guy? We, we talk about it. I mean, and there's on the other side, there's some guys that have gone through the draft, and then 
you know, um, maybe two years and they, we draft him as third year guy. It's, it's just, everyone has a different path. Um, so we just try to evaluate the player, um, and see where he can go, uh, forward. But, um, it, it's, it's kind of a, it's hard to put in the context, but it's, we don't really worry about the age as much, you know? So. You see this as particularly strong draft, and you know whether it's centers or wings or big anything that particularly stands out for you. I think there's some there's some good all around players. There's there's some some centers. There's some big D. Um, so um, it just we just got to put them in the right order, and hopefully they fall to us. Uh, you know, like like Jeff said, you know, center is obviously a big position that we're looking for, but sometimes. Those guys are gone by the time we're picking. Sometimes, so it's so it's hard. But um, but there's there's a there's a gamut of of players. There's some some really good big D men this year. There's some centers. So we just uh, got to put it all together. Jeff said the other day that people don't appreciate maybe how how much work goes into just going to all these games everywhere in Europe and North America. I mean, how many? How many if, do you have any, any any idea like how how many games and players that your team has watched over the last like nine ten months? I mean, just, kind of I mean, just for myself, it's been over two hundred games. Um, you know, whether it's live or video, um, but the travel since COVID is it's it's difficult, especially in Canada. Um, it's not as many flights, uh, delays, so you're always rearranging your schedule. Um, you know, you might be going out to British Columbia and you get out there and all of a sudden your flight's canceled or you get out there and one of the players is hurt and now you got to go all the way back there two weeks later. So it's, it's an evolving thing. It's, it's, it's difficult. So when you're evaluating prospects, setting aside the skill level, what do you look for um, in conversations with them or conversations with people who work with them as far as off ice contributions that they could make to the team down the road? It's huge. Uh, we do a lot of background work, um, whether it's our area guys, you know, psychologists, that, that type of stuff, and character. It's it's where these guys, again, we're drafting. Some of these kids, like, they're not even going to be 17 by the time we draft them, or they're not going to be 18 when we draft them. And you got to project where they're going to be in, you know, four or five years. I mean, I have a son that's 18, and it's, you know the, and you guys all probably have kids and stuff, so it's, you, you, it's hard. You can't be too hard on them, but you just want to make sure that they have that that inner drive, that character, that when they're 23, 24 years old, they're going to be good people. And I think we've done a good job. I mean, you've seen, you know, Roman Yossi's and, you know, Pekka Rene's and like, they're just good human people, human beings, you know, and that's, that's what we want. So. Along the same lines, like when you're trying to identify those things that make a star player, that, that, that in six years can make a star player, how much do you watch like the sort of, during during a game, their maybe their reaction on the bench when the team gets scored on, or like how they interact with the coach. Uh, during we the watch game. that a lot, and that's why it's it's really important to be be live at games. The body language, you know, there's some guys in the draft this year. Some of their issues are, yeah, they can score, they're offensive, but there's some deficiencies in their body language. And but our job is to kind of dig deep around that and say, he's 17, can he? Can he change? Can he get better? So, it's a it's a tough job to kind of evaluate a 17 year old and say, oh, we're not going to draft him because he's made mistakes when he's 17. It's we just want to make sure that he can be coached and and he's got the character to want to be better. So, um, with that being said, obviously you want to pick guys in the draft and you want them to be there. But how important is it to maybe stay in touch with guys that don't go draft, you know, in reference to like a Nolan Burke who scored 50 yeah. goals in the OHL last year? Oh, and it's you, you just look at all of them, right? Like I said before, there's there's all different paths, and some kids develop quicker than others. So we're always looking at guys that have gone through the draft. Um, there's free agent. You know, Greg Dressel does a great job. He does all their free agencies. So you know, we're always looking for that guy that is a slow developer or whatever. Um, so it's it's important. Yeah. Tom, on that note, Cole Smith was a pretty big win for your, your staff getting him on Yeah. Uh, what do you remember seeing about his game that made you think he could become an NHL contributor? Just his, just his compete and, and his skating. He can skate, you know. I didn't see him a ton, to be honest with you, but um, our our guys had, had some big viewings on him and um, it, just his character, his his drive and – now you see him like that's that's what he is. 
So. And then Jeff kind of referenced some of the maybe differences between you know scouting for David and scouting for, for Barry. Is there a, maybe an example or two that, that you can say that in terms of the, what it's like processing information or how you present it? Just just some of the information. I think Jeff touched on it a little bit. Just some some stuff that um, Barry wanted to kind of do differently um, with our evaluating and how we how we entered it in the computer, all that type of stuff. Um, but it's been a really good you know transition. Um, you know Barry's been here before, so it it was kind of seamless. You know he just wanted a couple different things for for him to it was for him to like kind of read you know like profiles and stuff like that. So. But it's been, it's been great. Ask Jeff, but Glenn Sanders retiring after twenty plus years yeah. of the organization. Well, what's his impact been over that time? Oh, uh, he's he's not only is a good scout, he's just a good human being. You know, he's fun to be around. Um, he knows the Western League inside and out. He's he's done every job in the Western League. You know, GM. He's just got inducted into the Hall of Fame out there. Um, so he's just he's just a good good person and great scout. So. Thank you, Tom. All right. Max, if you want to make your way over here. But first, we'd like to welcome Brad Willis from the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame for a special message. Thank you. Appreciate it. Morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Brad Willis from Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame. Wanted to take a moment to recognize the Predators organization. Uh, later today, the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame will announce our yearly honors, and I'm proud to announce the Nashville Predators have been selected as professional team of the year. We wanted to obviously recognize the efforts of Coach Burnett, Barry Trotz, the players, Sean Henry, and the entire organization uh, for taking Preds fans on an incredible run and getting the team back into the playoffs. So congratulations to everyone involved with the Predators organization. The primary reason, though, that I'm here today is to recognize one of the Predators' all-time greats. At the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame, our bylaws state that a player must be retired from their sport for three years before we can be considered and we can be induct them. And uh, due to his retirement in 2021, I believe that puts us right on time. Since his retirement, we've seen a statue erected in his honor, and his number is the only number that's been retired by the Predators organization. So I'm here today to announce that Pekka Rene is a first ballot inductee into the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame class of 2024. Thank you. What's up, guys? Wow, thanks for the heads up. I uh, had no clue. Every time I come to the city, it's something special. So, I mean, that's pretty, pretty unreal. Thank you very much. I mean, what an what an honor. Um, yeah. We'll take some questions for Pex now. Sure. That's Rob really cool. In Finland and maybe never having even heard of Tennessee before. What does this mean to you now? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's it became my second home. So uh, feel. I mean, obviously, anytime I come back to the city, it feels like coming back home, and um, you know had an unbelievable opportunity to play play here for multiple years and um, have an impact on the team organization and the and the city so it, it does m mean a ton for me and and you know all the things I'm it's getting it's getting a little bit almost overwhelming I mean you have a jersey in the rafters and statue outside of the rink and and um, now uh, sports Hall of Fame in Tennessee so that's mm -hmm. That's pretty pretty unreal. Um, I don't know. I, you guys gotta work hard to surprise me next time I come <laughs> come to the city. But uh, but yeah, it's it, it does feel. I'm so privileged to be you know standing here and receiving this kind of honor. Yeah. Has the uh, has the, the job been, been treating you? What what have you learned in your in your time in the, in the new rules? I learned a ton. I mean, you just learn from the other guys. I mean, there's we have people in this organization who, who've been scouting or um, plus twenty years, and and uh, it's it's been really cool. I mean, even even these meetings, going through them uh, first time, to be honest with you. So just seeing how much work goes into it, it's uh, it's really impressive. And um, I'm sitting there all all years and learning and. Um, but just the fact that how much these guys travel, how much they see games, and um, all the work that goes into it—it's—it's uh, it's pretty impressive. And 
uh, I, I feel like I'm still pretty fresh off, you know, from my playing days. So the transition has been smooth and um, I've been given enough time to enjoy enjoy the retirement as well. But it, now it's been awesome to be back back involved and um, go to the rinks, get involved and, and get to know these younger, younger players and different age groups. Um, I love it. Pekka, for you, as you are learning how to do these things, but being the former goalie that you are, when you're watching these netminders, what trends impress you about some of these younger guys? I think it's just the fact that uh, nowadays, it, 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 I feel like it's even becoming harder and harder to evaluate goalies because they are coached so, so well and from early ages. So everybody is technically really good. and. And just uh, finding those little things that separates them uh, can be can be hard, and it, it takes a lot of time, a lot of a uh, lot, lot of time to watch them, and um, and then obviously like Tommy and, and, and Jeff touched on, you know, second part is um, first identifying the talent, and then you know trying to learn the little bit of character and 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 doing a little bit of background work. So. You guys had a goaltending prospect selected last year. Is that, is that cool? Is that yeah, Juha Jatkola. <laughs> um, have you got a chance to, to see him? Uh, yeah, time? bunch, yeah. He's, uh, he, he personally had probably um, a little bit of an up and down season. Um, plays in uh, the highest highest level in, in Finnish Liga, so that's that's good where he's at um, development-wise. Um, he had a he had a injury at the end of the season and ended up missing the uh, rest, rest of the season. He's back back to being healthy now, but uh, he's on a, he's on the right track. Checko, logistically, how does how does your job work? Are you splitting time between here and between Europe or traveling too? I mean, how do you sort of make all that? Uh... Mostly, mostly in Europe. Um, I come back that back back to Nashville um, maybe four times a. A season, a year, and uh, but mostly in in Europe and in Finland and different tournaments in around Europe and um, so, but yeah, mostly mostly in Europe. Um, these, are, but the, I always enjoy coming back back to Nashville though. How does the travel stack up from when you were a player to now traveling around Europe? So different, so different. I mean, back then you have this, you know certain schedule that you know <clears throat> you know what you know you kind of have this constant thing and 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 uh, i'm sure most of our scouts they they still has <laughs> they they still have uh, mine mine are more kind of goes in periods and and uh between the tournaments i have time at home and um so but yeah you talked to, to you see uh, much since the end of the year and Maybe about his future uh, as well. Yeah, he's still in town, actually. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, he's uh, he's in a good place. I mean, obviously, obviously, this is a big summer for Choose, and and uh, you know, obviously, can't go really. I mean, he's he's a good friend of mine, so obviously, wish him. I I, I want to see him be a predator for for a long time, and but uh, those things are ahead of uh, you know coming this summer so hopefully everything goes smooth and um, but yeah he's in a, he's in a good place on another guy that's in the organization after seeing him some this year what impresses you about Yaroslav obviously the jump that he's made from Russia to North America what's telling about him so far well i think it's just the number one that number one thing that stands out is his talent and his just his athleticism you know how athletic he is um, you know you see him on the ice, and you, you see everything he can. He's able to do, and his goalie skill um, is is special. And uh, but I, I think maturity-wise, you know, he's uh, this was his second year pro, and uh, I mean they're still playing, and hopefully goes deep. And, and uh, but uh, you know he's 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 taken strides, and he's on the right track as well, and and uh, had a really good regular season, and. And hope, well, hopefully they go deep, but uh, very impressive young goalie. We talked about some of the off ice uh, characteristics that you watch for as you're scouting. Is there anything specific or maybe different that you hone in on when you're looking at a goaltender? Uh, I mean, 
not not like a one specific uh, thing, but obviously the biggest thing you you, you got to have passion, you got to have drive, you got to love the game. I, I think that's a that's a one thing that is going to separate separate you down the road, and uh, that's a that's a one thing that I I try to find out or look for.